How you doing, econ students? This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Right now, we're going to talk about floating and fixed exchange rate. You should have already watched the video explaining the demand and supply for different currencies and how we get an exchange rate. You should also understand the idea of appreciation and depreciation. Now, it turns out there's two different types of exchange rates. There's floating and there's fixed. A floating exchange rate is one that fluctuates with the market. So if demand goes up or down or supply goes up and down, the exchange rate is going to change. And the market sets the exchange rate. A fixed exchange rate is when the government takes control and tries to peg one currency's value to another currency. The government doesn't allow market forces to work and they try to keep that exchange rate fixed or at least in some sort of range. It seems like we have that debate a whole lot in economics, right? Should the government do something or should they stay out of our way? We talked about, we talked about price controls in markets, when we talked about minimum wage, we talked about fiscal policy, monetary policy, and it's the same situation here. I can't tell you if having a floating or a fixed exchange rate is better. I can just tell you what they are and you can decide for yourself. The policy you prefer depends a lot on how much exports and imports are of your GDP. So if you don't sell or buy things a lot from other countries, it's not can affect you much. But if you do buy or sell things from other countries, keeping an eye on the exchange rate is super important. For example, if you're a business in one country and you sign a long-term contract with a business in another country, you got to keep an eye on the exchange rate. If the currency of the other country appreciates a whole lot relative to yours, that can cost you a whole lot of money. So how might a country set or peg its exchange rate to another currency? To learn this, let's go to the graph and look at the supply and demand for dollars relative to Chinese yuan. We've got the downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve. And together, they've set the exchange rate. Instead of having a floating exchange rate that can go anywhere, let's say the United States decides to fix their exchange rate with China. Yeah, I know. It's ironic. I know. So in this make-believe world, let's say the United States has a whole lot of exports to China. Yes, that's definitely make-believe. Now let's assume that the demand goes up for dollars because the Chinese want to buy more American products. So now the dollar is going to appreciate relative to the Chinese yuan. Now in this make-believe world, the government decides they don't want that to happen. If the dollar appreciates, that's going to make United States goods more expensive for the Chinese, so they're going to buy less of our stuff. So the government wants to keep the exchange rate the same as it was before. And to do that, they have three different options. First, the government could decrease interest rates. This would decrease capital inflows in the United States. So people would take their money and put it somewhere else because there's relative higher interest rates in other countries. That would decrease the demand for the dollar, causing the exchange rate to fall. The second option is for the United States government to start buying a lot of Chinese currency. Yes, I know. Ironic. Yes, I get it. This would increase the supply of dollars in the foreign exchange, causing the exchange rate to fall. The third thing the government can do is have some sort of foreign exchange control, which would limit the transactions for people who are buying and selling dollars. For example, they could set some sort of policy saying the Chinese can't buy certain United States assets. This would decrease the demand for dollars and would cause the exchange rate to go back to the original equilibrium. In all three cases, the government is trying to manipulate the market to set exchange rates. And again, the government might want to do this because they want to keep exchange rates artificially low to increase exports. Now, in real life, the United States, Canada, and the UK all have floating exchange rates. Hong Kong, Argentina, and Bulgaria all have fixed exchange rates. And other countries have established some sort of range that the currency has to stay in between. So if their currency starts to appreciate or depreciate outside that range, the government gets involved. I hope this video helped you understand the idea of floating and fixed exchange rates. Make sure to take a look at the playlist for this unit because it has a bunch of videos that cover all the key concepts. Also, take a look at my macro review video because it covers all the stuff you need to get ready for the AP test or for your final exam. All right, till next time.